Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Murky, and uh, just going to make a short video uh, commenting on uh, a Tom Soul column from uh, December 20th, so about a couple weeks ago. Okay, in this, in this Tom Soul column, the, the, the passage, or the, uh, the paragraph that bothered me is, uh, and by the way, the... Uh, the the column is called the fallacy of redistribution and, and it's on uh, nationalreview.com and um, the, the 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 paragraphs that uh, bug me are and he says the, the history of the 20th century is full of examples of countries that set out to redistribute wealth and ended up redistributing poverty. Uh, the communist nations were a classic example, but by no means the only example. Um, dot dot dot. Um, when the Soviet Union conf when the Soviet Union confiscated the wealth of successful farmers, food became scarce. Okay, now he's referring to uh, the collectivization of the farms and. Uh, the, what this video is about is, is the is the entire backstory behind this, you know. Uh, you make you know I I I, I want to be unfair to him, but it, it you know uh, on nationalreview.com they have a picture of uh, uh, for this column they have a picture of uh, uh, President Obama and uh, that 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 guy known as Joe the Plumber, and I guess he is. Uh, Trying to compare the Soviet situation to uh, what Joe the Plumber was mad about, uh, which is, uh, according to Tom Soul, um, redistribution. Okay, but the the the, the farm collectivization uh, of of the Soviet Union uh, was was a uh, a means a means to industrialize the Soviet uh, uh, economy or the or the a means to uh, industrialize the Soviet Union and uh, the book that explains that is uh, Why Nations Fail by uh, Esamoglu and Robinson which and, that, and this is a new book from 2012 and uh, so they they give the backstory on the uh, the farm collectivization industrialization. Uh, so on page one twenty six, they uh, Esamoglu and Robinson uh, uh, write: Economic growth, Stalin style, was simple. Develop industry by government command and obtain the necessary resources for this by taxing agriculture at very high rates. The communist state did not have an effective tax system, so instead Stalin, quote, collectivized, unquote, agriculture. This process entailed the abolition of private property rights to land and the herding of all people in the countryside into giant collective farms run by the communist party. This made it much easier for Stalin to grab agricultural, agricultural output and use it to feed all the people who were building and manning the new factories. So, you see, uh, this redistribution under the uh, communist system was to, to modernize their, their uh, economy. And, uh, and then on the modernization of the economy, you have to, you have to look at the, the context of this. Uh, German, uh, Germany, uh, in, in Germany, Hitler had uh, risen to power, and uh, of course, Stalin and the Soviet gov government had noticed this. So, uh, uh, the, the Marxist economist, or Marxian economist, uh, uh, Paul A. Barron, 
in his in his book The Long Review. He he he, t he, he writes a column or an essay about his uh, uh, trip to the Soviet Union shortly after uh, Stalin had died. And uh, he, he discusses the whole uh, Stalin uh, period and the and the uh, the farm collectivization. And he says uh, German fascism was incessantly and most success successfully used by Stalin and the Soviet government as a reason for an intensified campaign against all potential opposition to the absolute rule. Um, a few pages down. Now this this is the uh, the, 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 the the dilemma that the uh, the Soviet people faced uh, when Stalin was in power. Um, if they did not industrialize their economy, um, how how would they uh, defend themselves against the fascists? You know, it's, it's a good question. And of course, and in, to in in rewind, the industrialization was uh, possible because of uh, the uh, putting the people on collective farms. And uh, as Asimavu says, uh, obtaining the necessary resources uh, by either taxing agriculture, but as I, as I mentioned, they didn't, they, they couldn't tax. They, uh, to, to, to remind you, they grabbed the agricultural output and used to feed all the people who were um, building and manning the new factory. Grab the ag agricultural output and uh, collect the farms was the way to do that. Now, to be to be fair to uh, Sol, he is just pointing out how uh, this this did not uh, incentivize people to um, to produce, and uh, it it didn't incentivize people to uh, be as productive as uh, they would have been had. Uh, the, the farms been run uh, for profit, and uh, I won't dispute that because uh, that's not what this video is about. This video is about um, what the what the column left out. So back back to Paul A. Barron. He he went to the Soviet Union. Uh, he went to Moscow. Uh, with the capital of the Soviet Union after Stalin had passed, and he talked to the people there about what they they thought about the Stalin uh, period, and uh, and this is very uh, what I'm getting to is what I want to uh, make uh, make known, or uh, this is what I think more people should should know about. And he says, uh, quote. Most of those to whom I talked, as well as those who talked amongst themselves in my presence, argued that the basic policy policy of the Soviet government in the course of industrial industrialization and collectivization campaigns was essentially correct. That it was fully borne out by subsequent experience. That it that in its absence, Russia would have lost. The war, with the suffering resulting therefrom, really surpassing all the misery that was endured under Stalin. So, th so to wrap things up, what 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 uh, the Stalin period? Uh, what the question that the Stalin period should? Uh, should force us to answer is what is the lesser of two evils communism or fascism 